اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین الرحمن الرحیم ملک یوم الدین اياك نعبد واياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين لقد صدق الله رسوله الرؤيا بالحق لا تدخل المسجد الحرام إن شاء الله آمنين محلقين رؤوسكم ومقصرين محلقين رؤوسكم ومقصرين لا تخافون فعلم ما لم تعلموا فجعل من دون من دون ذلك فتحا قريبا هو الذي ارسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا محمد رسول الله والذين معه أشداء على الكفار رحماء بينهم تراهم ركعا سجدا يبتغون فضلا من الله ورضوانا سيماهم في وجوههم من أثر السجود ذلك مثلهم في التوراة ومثلهم في الإنجيل كزرع أخرج شطأه فآزره فاستغلظ فاستوى على سوقه يعجب الزراع ليغيظ بهم الكفار وعد الله الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات منهم مغفرة وأجرا عظيما بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألم نشرح لك صدرك ووضعنا عنك وزرك الذي أنقض ظهرك ورفعنا لك ذكرك فإن مع العسر يسرا إن مع العسر يسرا فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ فَانْصَبَ وَإِلَى رَبِّكَ فَرْغَبَ آمَنْتُ بِاللَّهِ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ سَيِّدُنَا مُحَمَّدُ الرَّسُولُ اللَّهِ إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم 
اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا على تخك وضع نفسك وزين تعرشك ومداء كلماتك كل ما ذكرك وذكره الذاكرون وغفلنا عن ذكرك وذكره الغافلون We ask Allah Ta'ala and we plead with him to grant us the salat upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to make us live with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to make us die with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam make us resurrected with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and drink from his hand inshallah from his pool when everybody is thirsty we ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that, that grant us adorn our heart with his love 
and beautify our limbs with his sunnah, with the sunnah of the Prophet and beautify our intellect and, and, and elevate, elevate our intellect to think of serving his, 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 his ummah and to be in the services of, of his ummah always, Ya Arham Rahim. Ask Allah Ta'ala to make us sh shades among the shades of the Prophet Sallallahu in this time. Ask Allah Ta'ala to make us lights among the lights of the Prophet Sallallahu in this time. Ask Allah Ta'ala to make us an extension of the Prophet Sallallahu in this time. In every way, Ya Arham Rahim, Ya Rabbi Alameen. We ask Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala to open our heart to his love, to follow his sunnah, and to elevate it, and to, and to never feel shy from it, and to always, always elevate it. Ya Arham Rahimin. Ya Rabbi Alameen. We ask Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala, Ya Arham Rahimin. Come to you to honor, well, come to you to learn about your Prophet and to honor him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and to increase our love for him, Ya Arham Rahimin. We plead with you, Ya Arham Rahimin, Ya Rabbi Alameen, to fulfill our needs, Ya Allah. We come to you with our brokenness, we come to you with our, come to you with our, with our, with our mistakes and with our shortcomings, and we come to you with our needs, Ya Arham Rahim, that are endless. We ask you our poverty in every way, Ya Arham Rahim. We ask you, Ya Arham Rahim, to satiate our thirst for, to, to be closer to the Prophet Sallallahu We ask you, Ya Arham Rahim, to bring us out of the desert of our passions and our desires, and to bring us closer to you, Ya Arham Rahim, and to your Prophet Sallallahu We ask you, Ya Arham Rahim, Ya Rabbil Alameen, mend our brokenness, Ya Arham Rahim, fulfill our needs, Ya Allah, if they are good for us in this dunya and hereafter, Ya Allah, fulfill them for us, Ya Arham Rahimin, in the way that you want, in the way that's fit for us, Ya Arham Rahimin, without any fitna, without any hardship, Ya Allah. And if you know that they're, they're, our needs are not good for us, Ya Allah, Ya Arham Rahimin, Ya Rabbi Alameen, grant us that which is good for us and make us satisfied with it, Ya Arham Rahimin, Ya Allah, Ya Arham Rahimin, Ya Rabbi Alameen, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi. We don't know what to, we don't know what, what, what to choose for ourselves, Ya Allah, choose for us. We don't know how to plan for ourselves. Ya Allah, plan for us, Ya Arham Rahim. Ya Allah, make us satisfied with your choices for us and grant, grant us rida and grant us satisfaction with all your decrees for us, Ya Arham Rahim. Ya Rabbi Alameen, Ya Rabbi Alameen, Ya Rabbi Alameen. Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi, don't make us die except that we are in a state of Iman, in a state of Islam, Ya Arham Rahim. Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi, Ya Arham Rahim. Ya Rabbi Alameen, Alhamdulillah, Ya Rabbi Alameen. We're, we're, um, Every day we come to make salat upon the Prophet Is every day we come to say salat upon the Prophet to gather over that. Is a day that we have to celebrate. We have to celebrate because we could be doing a lot of things. Allah could be could be making us busy with a lot of things that we think are valid, that we think are important, that we think and so. And um, and and but Allah Taala wants us to be here. So we ask Allah Ta'ala to grant us the, the ability to, to, to be grateful to Him and to see the greatest bounty of being here as a gift from Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma ameen, Allahumma ameen. And to never make us void of always being in a state of readiness to respond to gatherings like this, gathering of salat upon the Prophet Sallallahu gatherings of knowing about the Prophet Sallallahu and gathering of increase of our love to the Prophet Sallallahu we always start with a, with a, with a, with a na'at or a durood or, or a nasheed, and today is no difference. Brother Muhammad, Brother Muhammad uh, Ali, please come in, inshallah. Uh, you get, can you get the mic for Brother Muhammad? Whatever you want to do, you, want, you feel comfortable there, comfortable there. You want to come in here, you can come in here. It's up to you. However you want to do it. You're, you're well, I'll come in here so everybody can see you. So I think it's better. Yeah, yeah. It is, it's not, no, it's not, no, it's good, it's okay. We don't have a lot of time, just go ahead, it's fine. No problem. Come on, come on. I just sit here with you, inshallah. Say, give you a chair. Inshallah. So why don't you just sit in the chair and then you sit in there, inshallah. Just to put this in context, we always, every day we, every day we do a nasheed that praise the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that, 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 uh, that incite us to love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to follow his sunnah, to, you know, praise him with that which Allah had praised him with. Right? Praise him with that which Allah had praised him with. You can never praise the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam better than what Allah Ta'ala had praised him with. Right? So where, where can we be, right? But we, we, we try, right? We try, because it's a sunnah. It is a sunnah, right? How many poetry has made, been made at the time of the Prophet about him, at his time, from his companions? 
abundance. Right? So we, we, we try to enlist in that. We, all, we do it in Arabic because that's what I know. But, you know, the language of love of the Prophet is something that is universal. Universal in all the Muslim land. But it came out in different languages and different cultures in different ways. And if we can have every single day a manifestation of that love in the language in here, that would be great. Now, do I understand Urdu? I don't. Right? But I understand that it's a language of love of Sidna Rasulullah. And it moves me as much as any Arabic, any, Arabic, any Arabic thing that I understand. Because as I said, the language of love is very universal. Touches everybody. Inshallah. So, Brother Muhammad, Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum. I feel out of place saying anything about the Prophet while sitting next to you, but you insisted, so Inshallah. I'll say a poem. This is uh, from Hassan bin Thabit. This is what I heard growing up that this is from the poet of the Prophet, Hassan bin Thabit. Yeah. He's also mentioned in the Shamail, I think. I don't know if the Sanad is weak or uh, proper or not, but this is a nasheed that. I think in Pakistan, India, we all grew up listening to. It's in Arabic and Urdu, both. Uh, starts with Arabic and then uh, translates into Urdu. Um, and it's from, uh, written by Hassan bin Sabit, uh, yeah. the companion of the Prophet So, and we'll start with salutation of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, inshallah, together, inshallah. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammadin 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 wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallim Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammadin As-subhu bada min Tala'atihi Wal-laylu Dajamin Wafaratihi Hanure Sahar Chahre Se Tere Or Shab Allahu, 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 Allah, Allahu, 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 Allah, Allahu, Allahu, Allah, Allah. Hadi hai 
तमाम उम्मत के और रानुमा है शरीयत के अल्लाह 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 साथी शजारू न तो कल हजारू शक्ल कमारूबी उंगली के इशारे पे पेड़ चले इजाज से पाथल बोल उठे और चांद हुआ है दो टुकड़े अंगूष्ट के एक इशारे पे अल्लाह अल्लाह मुहम्मद हैं अपने आका इसी नाम से अपनी जो बका अल्लाह 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 चेहरे से तेरे और शब की रौनक जुल्फों से अल्लाह 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 اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا ابراهيم وعلى ال سيدنا ابراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا ابراهيم وعلى ال سيدنا ابراهيم في العالمين انك حمد مجيد محمد مي الله ريورد يو ذاتس ات وي وي انلست يو ناو يو انلستد يو انلستد ايفري نايت ناو ذاتس ات ان شاء الله جزاك الله كل خير مي الله ريورد يو انك ساس شميو اللهم امين اللهم امين اللهم امين Uh, Bismillah ala barakatillah we we uh, read from the the shamail of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam we read um read um 
a little bit from here, a little bit from here, and a little bit from there, inshallah. We'll read today, inshallah, starts from reading from the chapter on how the Prophet وسلم, used to love perfume. The reason why, because, you know, there is, there is a notion that we have to, that, that the Prophet وسلم, was just, uh, you know, an ascetic doing, you know, no. Prophet Sallallahu was an ascetic for sure. Prophet Sallallahu was beyond asceticism. Asceticism was when you recluse yourself from society and recluse yourself. It was, it was, it was the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was not emulating. He had to be emulated. He was to be emulated Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But the chapter is, Say Allah, Fit Babu Maja'a Fit Atturi Rasulillahi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Page 160, and the other one in the in the the one that Al Imam Ghazali had uh, had produced is what the, some of the brothers have the. Hmm? Do you guys know what I'm talking? about? It's chapter 33. Chapter 33 will be the same, inshallah. Everybody is the same. Everybody is good. Alright, Bismillah. Hadathana babu ma jaa fi taatur Rasulillahi sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Chapter on. The, who is say Allah? You wanna? حدثنا محمد بن رافع وغير واحد بالسند المتصل إلى الإمام الحج الحافظ أبي أبي عيسى. محمد بن سورة الترمذي رحمة الله تعالى حدثنا محمد بن رافع وغير واحد قالوا أبا أنا أبو أحمد الزبيري حدثنا شيبان أنا عبد الله بن المختار عن موسى بن أنس عن ما بن أنس من مالك عن أبي قال كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم سكة يتطيب منها. استي عبد الله وجلس قوت ذا قوت ذا تدل الصحابي عن أنس بن مالك رضي الله عنه said Allah's Messenger وسلم, had a vial from which he used to perfume himself. The Prophet وسلم, always had a pouch that Sayyidina Aisha would make for him with one of his wives that has a mirror in it, has a pick in it, and has a, a uh, what is it, a pouch? Is that what it says in there? What, it say? what does it say? A vial, a vial. vial. And not a vial for perfume. He takes care of himself, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet never been disheveled. He was not disheveled. As much as he's, he knows the dunya, he, loved to be, he loves perfume, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He loves to take care of himself. Last time we talked about the ladies, they have to take care of themselves and so, but you know, as much as the ladies have to take care of themselves, the gentlemen have to take care of themselves. We have, in moderation, of course. You know, you don't have to read JQ every single day, right? <laughs> JQ, right? G Q. Huh? G Q. It's not J. It's a G. It's a G Q. Whatever. I had students who read J Q. It's like anytime I say, "What do you guys read today?" He said, "J Q." <laughs> like, come on, next week, something else. Like somebody would say, "Mother Jones." Somebody would say, "The Nation." Somebody's like, "It's like, oh, Muhammad, what are you reading today?" That was in the university. That was not. It was a Muslim. Yeah, that was not. That was not in TCA. That was in the university. So you say. GQ. It's like, come on, Muhammad, some, come on. <laughs> something about a GQ, right? Yeah. So, no, I had not, should not be a, you know, you know, obsessed with themselves to the level where, where you know, what, what people are doing right now. But at the same time, you have to take care of yourself. Sunnah al-fitra. You know, we, we, we want our spouses to beautify, but we don't. Okay, come on. Really. Cleanliness. Sunnah al-fitra, the, 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 the thing that the Prophet is taking care of excessive hair, taking care of, of our appearance. The Prophet is saw a man who's a man who's disheveled, and he said, uh, he said to, to him, uh, what, type of, what type of wealth Allah Ta'ala had given you? And he said, everything, O Apostle of Allah, Allah had given me camels, given me horses, given me cows, given me sheep, given me land. I've got it all. And then he said, then let it show on you. Let it show on you. Yeah. It doesn't have to be expensive and Hermes and stuff, but it has to be, you know, well put, nicely done, it, right? Because that is essential. That is essential. Our youth, when they grow up, should not look for outside to emulate the ways of ignorance in consuming. 
they should look up to their mothers and they should look up to their fathers. And if they are well put, they don't have to look at what Kanye West is wearing or I don't know who's, whatever they are, whoever, or Snoop Dogg or whatever. Like, and you can tell I'm old school, right? <laughs> whoever is in there, right? I don't want to mention those, you know. They don't have to look up to those guys. They look up to, they look up to their fathers and to their mothers. They look up to the Muslim community because they're well put. They dress up nicely. It doesn't have to be expensive, but well put, right? Because that's the prophetic way. Spirituality doesn't go with being disheveled. I don't know where they got like this. The, the, the concept of faqih early on, the concept of faqih did not mean a lawyer. That means a lawyer. The faqih early on in the early generations, right, meant somebody who is concerned about their akhirah. And Malik rahmatullahi told us a lot about those early generations. And he said, he would tell us about Muhammad, Muhammad, ibn, Muhammad uh, he would tell us about his teachers, about Muhammad ibn, Muhammad ibn Ja'far, uh, Ja'far ibn Muhammad, Ja'far ibn Muhammad, Sadiq, how he was dressed up nicely, well put. He would tell us about their demeanors, he would tell us about how they were, right? this is how they were. And now, and guess what? They were the most pious people in their times. He would describe their piety, but also how they were. Right? He talks about Imam Malik spending so much time for perfume. Send into a late Sa'd, send us some, perf some expensive perfume. Right? The idea in here is not that we should emulate Jahiliya in its ways of consumerism, but we create a balanced one to show the world that, yeah, alhamdulillah, there is levity in our deen, there is expensiveness in our deen, and there is joy in it. And there is celebration, uh, celebration of it. Allah Ta'ala said in Surah Al-Ma'idah for the, uh, in Surah Al-Ya'la, ladina amanu, la tuharrimu tayyibati ma ahallallahu lakum. Wa la ta'tadu. Do not forbid that which Allah Ta'ala made lawful for you. But don't go, don't transgress. Don't go beyond that. This is a culture and civilization of excess. Right? So, balance. Here and there, inshallah. But, a believer, the Prophet Wasallam always wants the believer to be well put. Assamtu al-Hasan, the Prophet said, Malik narrates that the Prophet said that thalathun min, thalathun min al three things are from prophethood. One of them is good appearance. He, he said, part of prophethood, min al three things are, which means that the prophets, you know, received wahi about it. One of them is Assamtu al-Hasan. Like, well put. Men and women. Hadathana Muhammad ibn Bashar, Hadathana Abdul Rahman ibn Mahdi, Hadathana Azot ibn Thabit, and Subhamat ibn Abdullah, he called Kana Anas ibn Malik, a liar of the Tib, or Kala Anas in the Nabisar Sibilma, can a liar of the Tib. Stand up, Luxin, or next ladies, or who is going to say something? Thumama ibn Abdullah said, Anas ibn Malik did not reject perfume. What does that mean? It means that if somebody give him a, a, like a bile of perfume to use some of it, he would, he would not say no, right? And Anas also said the Prophet Sallallahu did not reject perfume. When somebody gives him perfume, he takes it, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I can help, you know, every year we talk about this, right? Talk about, you know, sometimes... You know, you go to the masjid and a, and a brother brings something from his pocket. You know, bring some, you know, bring a small bottle of, of perfume from his pocket. You know, and you know, the, those, those, uh, those chemical, chemicals, you know, it's just, it's just, it's, they're, they're, not, they're not like natural oils or anything else that they sell cheap in the, in the haram and stuff like that. Now they're all over the world. Like, it's China. It's made in China, right? They send them, and you know, most of those, they smell like, uh, like insecticides, right? <laughs> Extremely strong. If you put that thing, you will be sure that you have to find yourself a home because your wife is not going to admit you that night, right? And it's like, brother. And then he gives you a lot of it here and there. So, you, you, you know, you stay, stay three days in your head. And, yeah. So what do you do with cases like this? What do you do if you don't like that perfume? You take from it and do the sunnah, take a little bit of it. It's like, don't let him, don't let him do it for you. It takes like, let me do it for myself. And take things, put a little bit and honor it. And so I've seen our Shaykh, and he, he, subhanAllah, I remember 
I remember, a I remember once there's this brother who brought this extremely cheap perfume. A very cheap perfume. Like, and you could smell it from all over. I could smell it. So he brought it and he gave it to me. It's like the sheikh. He said like, oh, oh my gosh, how he said, may Allah reward you. You honor us with this. And he took it. May Allah Ta'ala be pleased with him. And he put a little bit in here. He put a little bit in here. Put it in its place and give it back to him. And honored him. The man was extremely happy. Next. You know, the, the smell was not good at all. It was not, it was not good. You know, felt bad for the sheikh. But, you know, look at, he knows that. But for him to endure that was for the heart of the person not to be broken is, is, is fine. I endured that, no problem, right? In addition to that, we're doing the sunnah of the Prophet we're adhering to it. No question, no worries. So, so, so it's, the Prophet said that you, he never returned somebody who gave him some, some, some perfume. So Allah said, Hadathana Qutayb ibn Sa'id, Hadathana. حدثنا ابن أبي فديك عن عبد الله بن مسلم بن جندب عن أبي عن ابن عمر قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ثلاث لا ترد الوسائد والدهن واللبن عن عبد الله بن مسلم بن جندب on the authority of his father that ابن عمر said Allah Allah's messenger said صلى الله عليه وسلم three things are not to be rejected yeah if somebody give them to you don't reject them right just don't you know don't say I I don't want them just take them yeah. Sunnah is to do so. Mm -hmm. What are those three things? Cushions. Cushions, if somebody, because they, sit to, they used to sit on the ground, and the Prophet would, you know, they would have cushions to sit on. Cushions are leathers, le leather, uh, uh, leather mats filled with palm tree leaves. That, that, that's what, that what was common. If it, people are, uh, are, you know, rich and so on, they would put wool in them. That's, that's how they were. Right, but that were that was rare in Arabia. They put palm tree leaves. The one that was in the house of the Prophet Islam, they had palm tree leaves. Right, so he would give them to the people to sit to sit on, so they won't sit on the ground. Right, so if somebody's you know don't don't reject it. Mm -hmm. Oil and perfume, mm -hmm. and milk. And milk. Yep. So, um, so we'll go inshallah to. Um, we go inshallah to what we were reading yesterday, which is the akhlaq, the khuluq of the Prophet sallallahu And there are a few things in there that we wanna, we want to, we want, we wanna to address inshallah bi idnillah. What was it, Stamble? Yeah. Chapter 48. Yeah. So we stopped on. The Hadith of Sidna. Yeah. Haddathana Sufyan ibn. Haddathana Sufyan ibn. So what's the page? Huh? In the In the Muhtar Holland translation, it's 265. 265. We read one hadith uh, from here, and then we, we move on to, to, to another chapter. Just we make selections from few chapters that are that. حدثنا سفيان بن وكي حدثنا جميع بن عمير بن عبد الرحمن العجلي حدثنا رجل بن تميم من ولد بن أبي هالة أبي هالة زوج خديرة رضي الله تعالى عنه كنا أبا عبد الله عن ابن الله أبي هالة عن الحسن بن علي رضي الله تعالى عنهما قال قال الحسين بن علي رضي الله تعالى عنه قال الحسين بن علي رضي الله تعالى عنهما قال قال الحسين قال الحسن بن علي رضي الله تعالى قال قال الحسين بن علي رضي الله تعالى عنهما سألت أبي عن سيرة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في جلسائه فقال كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم دائم البشر سهل الخلق لين الجانب ليس بفض ولا غليظ ولا سخاب ولا فحاش ولا عياب ولا مشاح يتغافل عما لا يشتهي ولا يؤيس منه ولا يجيب فيه قد ترك نفسه من ثلاث المراء والإكبار وما لا يعنيه وترك الناس من ثلاث كان لا يذم أحدا ولا يعيبه ولا يطلب عورته ولا يتكلم إلا فيما رجى ثوابه وإذا تكلم أطرق جلساءه كأنما على رؤسهم الطير إذا سكت تكلموا لا يتنازعون عند عنده الحديث من تكلم عنده أنصتوا حتى يفرغ أنصتوا له حتى يفرغ حديثهم عنده حديث أولهم يضحكون ما يضحكون منه يتعجبون ما يتعجبون ويصبروا الغريب على الجفوة في منطقه ومسألته حتى إن كان أصحابه ليستجلبونهم ويقول إذا رأيتم طالب حاجة فأرفدوه ولا يقبل الثناء إلا من مكافئ 
ولا يقطع على أحد حديثه حتى يجوز فيقطعه بقيام بنهي أو قيام صلى الله عليه سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وسلم Go ahead On the authority of Ibn Abi Hala that Al-Hasan Ibn Ali said Al-Hussein said I asked my father how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam comported himself among his table companions so he said Hassan ibn Ali is Sidna is the, the grandson of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he narrates from his younger brother right he narrates from his younger brother this is, this is very very uh, it's common that, that that elders sometimes would narrate from the youngers right they, they, elders who knows more would narrate from those who narrate less Imam Bukhari narrated from Imam Tirmidhi. The Prophet ﷺ narrated a hadith from a, from a companion. Right? There is a hadith in Muslim in which the Prophet ﷺ heard Tamim al Dari. Tamim al Dari was, was, a, was a Christian man from a Christian man from Daria, from, from Palestine. He became Muslim and he joined the Prophet. ﷺ. One of his cousins narrated to him the hadith of the Dajjal. The hadith of the right? The guy's hadith of the Dajjal that his, their, their ship was lost somewhere in the sea and they find themselves in this, in this uh, uh, island that they never had, they never seen before. And then they, he talked about a man who is, who is, uh, a, man who is a man who is big and, and, and so on. All the description of the Dajjal and he's tied up, in that, tied up in that cave. And he asked, what time is this? And is this the time where the prophet came in? Is, is the Arab prophet came in? And so on and so forth, right? So Tamim al-Dari narrated, this cousin of Tamim al-Dari, when, when they came out, out of the sea, they, 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 he went and he told his cousin, who is this Sahabi, and had this Sahabi told the Prophet wasallam about this story. The Prophet went to the minbar and he narrated exactly what Tamim al-Dari had said. So because the Prophet was always telling them about the Dajjal, right? He was telling them about, I told you before that three things, Every prophet has to convey to his ummah. One of them was every prophet has to tell them about the prophet sallallahu Every prophet has to talk about the hour. Every prophet has to talk about, in addition to tawheed and, and law and all of that and so, these are incumbent. Every prophet has to tell them about Sidna Rasulullah, our prophet. Every prophet has to tell them about the hour. Every prophet has to tell them about the Dajjal. Right? So the prophet was telling them about the Dajjal before. They knew about it, and then this man came, and the, the whole description of the jail was exactly as it is. So the Prophet of Islam stood up and narrated from somebody who is younger than him and less than him in ilm and taqwa and so on and so forth. He said, this is what Tamim al-Dari said, and he narrated. So this is Sidna al-Hassan radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Sidna al-Hassan ibn Ali, the grandson of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and his beloved, and one of the people who are being given glad tidings of Jannah, and Sidna al-Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu. They asked their dad, Sidna Ali radiallahu ta'ala about his, his conduct among his companions. Take that table, table companions in there, it has no place in there. His conduct among his companions. How is he when he sits down with people? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wouldn't we all need to know how the Prophet sallallahu was with people? When he sits down with people, how does, he, how does, how does things go? Right? And then imagine the Prophet sallallahu sitting with all of us. How is it? Imagine we get together, right? How are our gathering compared to the gathering of the Prophet So how, how does it go? What does he say? How was the Prophet Allah's Messenger وسلم, was always good humored, easy going. The Prophet وسلم, was always good humored. That's what they say in here. The Prophet وسلم, was always um, the Imam al-Bishr's temple is, is uh, with bright countenance. He's always smiling. He's never... Now, now mind you that the Prophet ﷺ has a lot of sorrows in his life. He lost his daughter right after, the, after Badr. He lost Sayyidah Ruqayya died. He buried her. While people are so happy about Badr, what did he do Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? He's burying his daughter. He buried all his children. He buried his, two of his wives. Sayyidah Khadija and, 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 uh, and Sayyidah uh, Zainab bint Khuzayma radiallahu ta'ala anha he's seen a lot he buried so many of his friends sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so many of his friends uh, his companions that are dear to him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
He saw him there. Buried Sidna Hamza and he saw him in the way he was mutilated. He's seen Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He's worried about his ummah. He's seen hellfire. He's seen it. Right? And he's worried about his ummah. So nobody can come and say, you know, I, I have problems. And that's why I cannot, I cannot spare a smile. All of that is in his heart, but when he faces people, he brings joy to them. Sometimes we get a small problem, and then the whole world has to feel that we are sad. We have become dispensers of sadness to the world. Right? We become, you know, you want some? You want some? <laughs> Dispensers of sadness to the world. Nah, that's not how the Prophet ﷺ was. You have your problem, we all have our problems. But his countenance is always. Because it brings the best of people. It comes back to you with ease. It comes back to you with, and so on. And this is a character that we have to, we have, to have from of the Prophet ﷺ. To be a source of goodness and happiness. Source, source of joy to the people around us. Right? There are people who are so is your joy to people outside. They go inside and they are like right, harsh on everybody inside, and that's 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 a sign of that's a sign of uh, of sickness in the heart. We have to be better. We have to be better. He, the Prophet ﷺ would smile to his, you know, he used to be called an Nabi al dahak He used to be called the Prophet who is. The, smile, the, the smiling prophet, because always smiling, to the kids, to his wives, to, and so on and so forth. Nothing rattles him. Nothing throws him out of his game. He brings the best of people, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we need to smile. We need to, we need to. We need to make the world better. There is tremendous amount of agonies and, 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 uh, and sadness and sorrow and so in the world. If it doesn't come from us, then from where? No matter what's in your heart, buy a smile. You know what I mean? Buy one. Put up one. Put some tape in here and some tape in here. Fake it until you make it, right? Fake it until you really start feeling happy, right? And, you know, at the end of the day, it's nothing is worth it. Leave your moment with happiness and goodness, and tomorrow Allah will take care of it. Because your sorrow about what's happening to tomorrow would not change what tomorrow is going to be, right? So, that Imal Bishr. And don't tell me you have problems more than the Prophet ﷺ. You don't. Nobody has. Right? But nonetheless, he's smiling. And then, easy going. He was easy going. He was not, he was not hard. He was not difficult. He was easy going. And he made it easy for people, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We'll give examples of this today or yesterday, and examples of how the Prophet was, how he, how he was, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Even in things that we think he would be sharp and so on, it would be easy, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Very easy, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Mild mannered, mm -hmm. neither rude nor coarse, nor boisterous. Mm -hmm. nor never rude. The Prophet was never rude. He'd never respond to rudeness with rudeness. Ever, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's always gentle, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because he knows that there is so much agonies in the world. He's not gentle, right? He brings, he, he brings that, he, he, he's, he's never boisterous, always, uh, or, uh, you, you know, loud and screaming and so. And some of his companions were loud, and he, it's fine, but he, he was not, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right? He was not. And he was not obscene. He was not obscene. It was a brother of mine, uh, not my, my blood brother. It was a brother, his name is Saleh. I remember Saleh. I don't know what Allah Ta'ala had done with Saleh. May Allah preserve Saleh wherever he is. He's from, uh, he's from Niger. He's from Niger. When I just came to America in Manchester, New Hampshire, my, so he learned English here. And he learned it with the people who work in, you know, work in, in uh, you know, um, uh, in you know car services and car uh, renting and all of that, those who wash the cars and so on. So no, no, you know he was a hardworking man and, and he was a good believer. He wakes up for qiyam layl every single day. He wakes up for fajr. Goes on to to the masjid in New Hampshire, extremely cold, extremely cold. And he drives with a car that doesn't have heat. It's like Saleh, you have all the excuses of stay of praying at home, <laughs> really, it, no way. But when he learned English, he learned all the bad language. He talks to you, 
and <laughs> all the, like the, the worst of the worst. Well, not, I'm not, like, it's not mild, no. It's like all of it. It's like Saleh, you don't get to say stuff like that. He said, well, you know, like, like, in the masjid. Sometimes in the masjid. Like, you know. <laughs> And I would tell him, Saleh, there is a moment you, you know, there is a moment you have to realize that you can't hide behind I learned English from bad people or bad mouth. You gotta understand that your faith cannot co cannot coalesce with being rude or being be, being uh, being um, obscene. You cannot iman and obscenity don't go together. The Prophet Sallallahu said, Al Haya Umina Al Haya I said al al you know, modesty and, and, uh, and shyness and, and uh, humility is from, from iman, from faith. And faith is from Jannah. And he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and obscenity is from uh, Jafa. Um, what's Jafa? And a recalcitrance, if you will, right? And obscenity is from recalcit recalcitrance, and recalcitrance is to hell fire. So we, we, we tend to get angry, we get upset, and soon we start using the jahili way of responding to things when we get upset. Because society makes it so easy for us. So easy for us. You hear it all the time. You hear it in the songs. You hear it in the thing. And then the kids are exposed to that in early age. A believer will never find himself saying bad words. I'm telling you, if we use our dhikr and we use our, we will ne you should, we should never find ourselves in a state, no matter how angry you are, to say bad words. And if you get to use to never say a bad word, it will hit you hard when you hear it in front of you. It will slap you. It's like slap. It's like. Uh, it's like it pokes your heart. So the Prophet ﷺ was never that person. He never fahish, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He could never say, I heard the Prophet ﷺ saying a bad word. And then he says, Nor obscene, nor slanderous, nor avaricious. He would not, he would take no interest in what he did not desire. Yeah, so what, what's the word that is before that? Ayyab is somebody who is, who is, uh, who is, a machine of critique. Ayyab is somebody who critiques and critiques and critiques and critiques and critiques. And this is a, this is a khasla, this is a bad khasla in a, in a, in a person. If you, if you get to, the, to be the person who is always critiquing, you're never going to be happy. Because the world will always give you something to critique. Always. And more. You will never be loved. The most beloved people to you, beloved people to you would not like you. The person has to know how to close their eyes and, and so on. Now, in the household, that's how you need, you know, you need to work with one eye when you are in your household. With you know, one thing you see it, and the other thing you, you know, you see one and you comment on one and you don't comment on ten. If you want life to go, that's how the Prophet ﷺ was. That's how the Sahaba, the great of them were. And those who were nitpicking, they, they divorced. Those who are nitpicking, I want this and I want that and I want this in this way and I want this. They were nitpicking and every single problem they became, they, they, they lost there. Among the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, without giving examples. Right? You have to let go of things. Because nobody is perfect. Because you know what? Somebody is letting go of your mistakes. Somebody is living with you, not picking on your mistakes. So we have to learn how to. Now, this is from the household. In the da'wah, when we live in the community, if you don't do that, if you always, all we do is critique, 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 and don't add anything to the table, we create an environment of discontent. And a discontent that is cheap. There is discontent that, is, that builds, and discontent that is cheap. That doesn't do anything except muddy the water, and when there is muddy water, there is no spirituality, there is no growth, there is no building of the community. And there are people in the community that all their ca capital is critique. They add nothing, they bring nothing to the table, they sacrifice nothing. And so when you work with the community, be ready that you're not going to see every single thing that you like. Right? 
you're not going to see what, what you're like. Because that's the nature of things. And you have to be patient. And you have to see certain things we're going to, we're going to fix five years from now. Certain things we're going to work on, inshallah, six years, ten years from now, we're going to fix them. Because nothing is get, getting, getting done in just like by a push of a button. This is a human being that you're talking about. A human being don't change just like that. And our community is diverse. And that's one of the, its strengths. But also one of its challenges. Right? And you can't please everybody. So what we do is that if you have a lot of critiques, ask yourself about how much of that you're involved to, to fix. Somebody said to us, came after the khutbah, came to the masjid, he looked, lived in the, in the community for a month, he comes to the masjid every month, every, every Jumu'ah, same every Jumu'ah, and we did not have a, a shelf, shoe shelf in, in the Aranur Academy. So when we get to Jumu'ah, you come to Jumu'ah and you see the shoes from, I don't know from where, a lot of shoes in front of the door, the small door of, of the, the, the musalla, we used to pray in the musalla, and you have a lot of shoes in there. So it came out one day and he said, Sheikh Hassan, why don't you tell people to get, us, to get, get a shelf? So I said, what about you take care of that? You, know, you see, everybody knows that we need shelves. You're not telling us anything we don't know. Right? So why don't you go ahead and take care of that? If you need money, we'll give you money. Just take care of this project and give us shelves. Right? I, you don't hear about That's it. We want to tell other people this, we want to tell other people about problems that you know that we want them to fix. We don't want to be part of fixing. And that's what critique, the cheap critique is. Right? I'll take critique from people who are carrying the burden with us. And I listen to the people who critique and alhamdulillah, that's fine. I listen to them. Most of what they say I know needs to be done in the community. I already we know. Because we're in the field, we see it on a daily basis. We know what needs to be done. But you, know, you see it, but you don't have the, the, the wherewithal to do it. You don't have the power, you don't have the manpower, you don't have and so on. And what is the community if it's not your contribution and my contribution and your contribution? What is, your, what is the community if you're a critique, you go and fix it? The community is not, does not need to be better in a certain area. Take the initiative and start doing it. And they'll wait for somebody else. It's a path that Allah had opened for you to be closer to Him. Dwell from it. I mean, delve into it. Right? So, He does not critique. He does not. He does not like, this is bad. 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 He does not. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Right? He sees it. If he can fix it, he fix it. If he doesn't, move on. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It means that the thing that he doesn't like, he does not go sit down in there and, and, and uh, sit down in there and, and, and write volumes of, of uh, discontented reviews about it. If he does like something, he puts his head around and he moves on. Unless the sharia is breached, then he would say something. But if he does like something, he moves on. Whether it's food, if, it's, if that which he doesn't like, he does not busy himself with. That which has no business in, he does not busy himself with, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He doesn't get himself into the business of others. Right? If he doesn't like food, he doesn't sit down and they're critiquing it. You, you guys eat this. Then, you know, you're ruining it for others. What if somebody's hungry and he needs to eat that? Right? You don't like it? Alhamdulillah. I'm, uh, we talk about this hadith, hadith sahih, that Prophet ﷺ was traveling with the companions. They were going to Mecca and they were for his hajj, sallallahu alayhi wa And he passed by this, this tribe who they want to treat the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa So they brought one of the beautiful de delicacies for them. What was the delicacy that they brought to the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa Huge lizard. It's lizard that, that is cooked in the, in the, in the sand. Right? When it's cooked in the sand, it stays just like that. So you have to cut the, you have to cut the skin to get to the meat. Right? But you look at it, and it's like still alive. <laughs> they put it in front of the Prophet wasallam, and they were happy that they presented this huge lizard in front of the Prophet wasallam. It's huge. Like those, if you look at the lizard of the Arabia, of the desert, they are huge, huge lizards. Right? And uh, fleshy and strong. 
They cook it in the sand, in the, in the hot sand, and right in front of the Prophet ﷺ. And, you know, and he looked at it, ﷺ, and he did not do anything. He did not extend his hand. He did not do anything. He just stayed. He just sit down with them. The man who offered it to the Prophet ﷺ said, Oh, Prophet Allah, is it haram? He said, no. He did not say, I'm disgusted. He did not say, ew, oh my gosh. You know? No. He didn't give the face. There's no face. He said, I don't find it in the diet of my people. I don't find it in the diet of my people. It's not familiar to me. So he is disgusted, but he did not say it. <laughs> he is disgusted, but he didn't say it. Because somebody else find that a tree. Sidna Khalid bin Walid said to him, Apostle of Allah, is it haram? He said, no. He said, can we eat? He said, dig in. And he dug in, he ate it. Sidna Khalid bin Walid dug in and ate the lizard. <laughs> Right? But the Prophet could not eat it. But at the same time, he's not there critiquing it. You guys could not find anything. We're hungry. We waited for you to find something, and then you guys could not find anything. But no, absolutely. Right? It doesn't make it a big deal. Right? He left himself from three things. What are, the, what are the three things that he left? There were three things he avoided. Hypocrisy, excess. It's, it's, Mira is not hypocrisy. The, the word mira here is, is argumentation. The Prophet said, Damin to liman tarak al mira'a baytan bil jannah, or qasran bil jannah. Say, I guarantee for those who leave argumentation and, uh, what's the word? Uh, argumentation, right? Argumentation, I would leave, I, I guarantee those who leave argumentation, I guarantee them a palace in paradise. Why? Because argumentation brings grudges and it escalates and it escalates. It doesn't mean any argumentation about a topic and you have an opinion and I have an opinion. It's going on and on and on about it, even if we, you know, on and on and on and on about it. And now it's not just intellectual thing. Now it's, it, 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 it destroys the unity of the community for no reason. You want to prove your point? He wants to prove your point? You, you, you and so? And then it destroys the fabric of the community. He said, Prophet ﷺ had, had left himself from three things. He doesn't argue with people. He tells them what they need to do. If they ask him, if they do it, they do it. If they don't do it, alhamdulillah, that's fine. He doesn't sit down in there trying to prove a point to people. To make people run through, uh, to make people uh, run the way he wants them to run. That's not the Prophet ﷺ. He's right. But he never push people to follow that right. He came to a man, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he said to him, your brother, your brother, hadith sahih, he came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he said to him, this man, he said, your brother came to complain about that, you know, you have this palm tree or two palm trees that prevent him from getting into his land. There is a road, there is a very short, narrow place in which he can get to his land, and those, that narrow place is owned by this man. He has three, three palm trees in there. So the man, the, 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 the man who wants to pass his land and has difficulty with those three palm trees told, came to the Prophet and said, like, my brother does not want to sell me those three, 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 uh, those three palm trees. He sell them to me, I find it easy to, you know, they're not too expensive, I give him whatever he wants and so on. So he went to the Prophet ﷺ because the man was difficult. So the Prophet came to the man and he said, you know, listen, this is, you know, this is difficult for the man to get to his land. Sell him those three, those three, uh, those three uh, palm trees and I guarantee you paradise. Sell it, give it to him. So give it to him and I guarantee you paradise. He said, no, I'm not going to give it to him. He said, I guarantee you paradise. Look, I, no, I don't want it. He had some grudge with him and he, it's been difficult. Right? He said, no, I'm not, I'm not giving it to him. Now, he didn't come sit down. It's like, I'm the prophet, and I run Medina, and you're going to give him your thing. It's like, he, gave it, he told him what he needs to know, and he didn't do it. He left him. So another sahabi, Abu Dahdah, went to him, and he said, look, I have the best garden in Arabia. I have the best garden in Arabia. If you give me your three palm trees, would you take my garden? He said, are you serious? I'll take your garden. He took your garden, Abu Dahdah, took that three camels, uh, three uh, palm trees, went to the Prophet that deal of three camels for paradise is still gone. He said, yeah, it's still on. He said, he got them. He got the palm trees. 
He said, Rabbi Halbayah, Rabbi Halbayah, what a good deal he had, oh Abu Dahdah. He said to him, Kam min idqin radah li Abu Dahdah, min idqin radah li kada kada li Abu Dahdah. Like he said, like how many, how many palm trees and how many beautiful paradise uh, gardens Abu Dahdah will get for his palm trees. But he never put his will on people. You understand what I mean? He, he's a prophet, but he never run people on his own will. That's not him. If they're convinced with it, they're convinced. If they're not convinced, he leaves them, sallallahu alayhi wa Certain things he has to maintain in society, but other than that, he was not. He was not. He never coerced people to do things that they don't want to do. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then, al-mira, uh, uh, argumentation, and that, what's the second stay, Asif? Excess. 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 So, I don't see much about excess. Why? We live in a civilization of excess. Excess in every single thing. We buy that which we don't need. Sometimes we, we have storage for stuff that we don't need. You know, this is, winter is coming closer. Let, let us be prophetic. Winter is closer, right? I want you to do this exercise for the sake of Allah. If we all love the Prophet ﷺ, and I'm pretty sure all do, I want you to do this. I want you to go to your closet today or tomorrow. Anything that you did not wear for two years, give it for the sake of Allah. Anything that you did not wear for two years, give it. I would even go further to say, anything that you did not wear for a year, give it for the sake of Allah. Jacket, whatever, whatever. There are a lot of people who are going to go through difficulty this winter. Let us do it in Rabi' al-Awwal, before Rabi' al-Awwal. Well, well, it's 28 of Rabi' al-Awwal, right? We're probably, right? Before Rabi' al-Awwal as a gift to the Prophet Access, right? If you did not wear it for two years, you're probably is not, not going to wear it. You just give it for the sake of Allah Ta'ala, right? Just let go of it. Allah will give you more, I have no doubt. Right? What did we say today? 16% of children in, in, in Eastern Tennessee go without food every single day. 16% of kids in Eastern Tennessee go without food, are in hunger, are, are in, in, in hunger, hunger states. They're, they're hungry. They go home hungry. If they don't eat the meal in the house, in the, in the school, they don't have a meal. That's an indictment on all the food that we throw in the garbage every single day. An indictment on our faith. Right? So access, access that we have, it's not just a personal thing. It's a, it's, a, it's a community thing. It's a societal thing. Really. It hurts people. It makes people poorer. And so on and so forth. It increases inequality. That excess that we have. You look at, the, you look at its impact in a, micro, in, a, in a macrocosm and you see that its impact is huge. Right? And then he says, the third one is, and what did not concern him. And that which did not concern him. This is, this is the recipe of happiness. Recipe of happiness is if you don't, if, you, if, you, if we adhere to this in a very strong way, we would be much, very happy, really. Most of our problems, we bring, bring them because we get involved. We, we want to get involved in other people's business. If we stay to just, don't get, don't get involved in that which doesn't, doesn't concern you. Because if you do, you're going to backbite. You're going to slander. You're going to, there are a lot of venues of sharr and evil that are going to happen when you, what? When we get involved in that which is not our business. We want to help. Sometimes we want to help, right? But we get involved in that which is not our business and we end up in a very, in a very. Sometimes you have to get in to help. If we know we're going to help, but the moment we realize that this is coming, you know, we, we push back and that's it. Can't make a, we can make a positive impact and stay back. Right? And then he says, Similarly, he would not blame someone. Uh, he would not blame someone. Uh, find he fault he left him. people off three things, right? Uh, yeah, we, he we finished that. those three, right? There were three things he avoided. Argumentation, excess, and what did not concern him. Okay. And then he says, what did he say after that? Similarly, he ah. would not blame someone, find fault with him, or invade his privacy. He says that he did not translate it, uh, he did not translate the section. He said, and he left people of their things. The Prophet 
This is what he does to people. He does not, and he left them from the following things. He does not blame. He does not. What is it? He would not blame someone. He does not blame somebody, and he does not. He does not blame somebody. He does not find fault in them. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Why he does not find fault in them? Because he does look for their faults. He does not find faults in people because he doesn't look for them. He doesn't go and, and find their histories. He doesn't go and search for things to hold on them. He doesn't, he doesn't, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He wants to come out to people with a heart that is encompassing everybody. He told Hadith Sahih Bukhari, لا يبلغني أحد عن أحد شيئا فإني أحب أن أخرج لكم سليم الصدر. He said, don't come and, and, and tell me about others because I want to come to you with a heart that is, that is, that is pure to everybody. Right? They come to you and say, Apostle of Allah, such and such did, such and such did. And he does want that. He says, don't do that. Right? Right? So the idea in here is that you know, we, 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 ought, we ought to pay attention to not, not looking for the faults of others. You know why? Because there, there is a hadith of the Prophet Muhammad who says, like, if you look for the faults of others, Allah will, Allah will, 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 uh, will take your faults and reveal them to everybody. So it's not a small thing. If we get to the habit of looking for the faults of others, you mind you that Allah Ta'ala will reveal all your faults in front of everybody in the hereafter. There are people in the hereafter that Allah Ta'ala will humiliate, humiliate them in front of the whole humanity. يُقَالُوا هَذِهِ غَدْرَةُ فُلَان هَذِهِ كِذْبَةُ فُلَان هذه is, you know, Allah Ta'ala will reveal all their secrets in the front of everybody. The angels from everybody will say, this is the treasury of such and such. This is the lie of such and such. This is, and will reveal all their secrets. Why? Because they were revealing and they were looking for the mistakes of others. So, these are all ingredients of happiness. Ingredient, ingredients of a good, good life. Don't fault, find faults in others. And then he says, Nor would he invade their privacy. No, he doesn't look for their, for their privacy. He doesn't look to, right? And then he says, He would only utter that for which he hoped to earn a reward. He only speaks about things that he will gain the reward of. No idle talk. No, no, he talks, he jokes with the Sahaba. We read about, about that later on, uh, yesterday. He jokes with the Sahaba a lot, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He jokes with them, right? He was serious. But they were always joking in the masjid. They were joking in the house. They were joking in the... So we'll read, we'll read tomorrow, inshallah, that the Prophet ﷺ would, would, would finish, inshallah, soon. That the Prophet ﷺ would entertain his, his, his wives by storytelling. Beautiful storytelling. It's like they're watching a movie. Right? So that, that, was, that levity was, was normal. Was, right? He would joke with his companions. He would, he would, you know, he would make them laugh. They would make him laugh, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, right, and so on. But at the same time, he does not say, does not utter, except that he, need, he that which he, he looks for reward in it. Most of our problems and our miseries comes from here. Come from here. Most of our problems and our miseries come from here. We say something that bites us, come and bite us, whether in this dunya and the hereafter. Most of what brings people to, to hellfire in the hereafter is here, is the tongue. Every single day, the Prophet ﷺ told us that the limbs, our limbs, they, get it, they, they say to the tongue, by Allah, be, be, be fearful of Allah in us. We go as you go. We go as you go. Wake up in the morning and we insult. We go up in the morning and we bite or backbite. We wake up in the morning and we, we are we are we are and so we, we swear by Allah Ta'ala on things and so on and so on and so forth. Right? And we have to be very careful. The Prophet told us that a person would say a word from the wrath of Allah Ta'ala will lead them to to hellfire for seventy years. We have to be careful of what comes out of our so many houses are destroyed because of words. So many hearts are broken, our kids. We break their hearts forever because we say something that, that, Allah, that makes people sad and, and, sorrow, and, and sorrowful for a long time. And be careful. Yeah, be careful, right? And then he says, When he spoke, his companions bowed in silence as if birds had alighted on their heads. And only when he fell silent would they speak. When he speaks, they listen. Why? Because they have tremendous, utter, tremendous amount of respect and love to him. He never put, he, he does not order them to do so. 
but they, 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 they have tremendous amount of respect to him. Why? Because he won their hearts. He won their hearts, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He worked hard for their hearts. He worked hard for their hearts to be where they're at, and now they respect him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I tell everybody who wants to serve the community, serving the community is not programs. I'm telling you again, I'm repeating this. Serving community is not this program and that program, this program and that program. Serving the community is loving them to the point where you wake up at night and pray for them. If you're able to do so, then what you do will be successful. If you're not able to do so, you're, you're making programs. Alhamdulillah, it's good. If our programming and our activities don't come from a sense, from a deep love to the community, on love to the community of the Prophet Wasallam, it's ephemeral, it's, it's fluffy. You want, it, it's fluffy, it would not take roots. Only if you love people. How do you manifest that love? Tell me how much you make dua for them. Tell me how much burden of theirs you carry. Right? And then you come and say, you know, I want, you know, we'll serve the community or I work for the community. How much love? If you don't have love for the community, you have resentment to the community, don't serve. Don't serve. Because your service will be an act of arrogance. You look down to people. I'm doing you a favor. And that's not how it goes. It will never be fruitful. It will be something that probably will be held accountable for it in the hereafter. Right? So when he says that, that they, 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 when, he, when he talks, they listen. That's the, that's the affirmation of how much he loved them, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when he loved them so much more than they loved themselves, they start reciprocating. They start reciprocating. The manifestation of that reciprocation is, <coughs> is what? Is that they are respectful to him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we'll stop in here, inshallah. We'll give one minute or two for a question or comments or addition, and then we make salat upon the Prophet and then we pray Aisha, and we'll stop tonight, inshallah. Zakallah we'll, we'll continue tomorrow hadith. We'll continue this hadith tomorrow. We have some nice hadith that we're going to read tomorrow, inshallah. So, okay. Anybody? Any addition? Any any question? Any any uh, any comment commentary? Yes, the Hamza. Bismillah. Um, so earlier you said. Why don't you get the mic so people can hear what you're saying? Uh, so earlier you said there's three things from prophethood. Um, you only named well put. What are the other two? Samtul Hasan wa tu adatu wa is in Malik and Muatta. What's to add? Uh, is to, to be deliberate and moderate at the same time. So one of them is to be deliberate and moderate, like not to be reactionary and not to be easily rattled. But to be decisive, it's called to edda. Like you're, you're dis you have discernment, right? That's one of them. The second one is is uh, is good comportment, Comport good comportment, right? Like well put, be well put, right? The third one is I forgot. Tomorrow, inshallah. Okay, anybody else? Any addition? Any? Yeah, yes, brother. Bismillah. Okay. Um, I was going to ask about the perfume. Like you said, if someone someone want to give you like a perfume, you like instead of accepting it, because like uh, something happened to me like in New York one day, somebody gave me like a perfume, it smells like soap. So I don't know like how to what if you say no how how can you say no without being rude in my opinion you don't say no you just take it from it's like oh it's like don't let him do it for you take it and do a little bit just a little bit yeah because i regret it like i regret it like <laughs> See, yeah honestly <laughs> but it's still bad <laughs> yeah <laughs> Smells like a soup or something like that. Yeah. Like, well, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Like, I'd rather smell that myself and break my, heart, my brother's heart. If I know him really well, I'd say, man, I am doing that. <laughs> I know him really well. 
I said, I'll take it from him and give it to him. Like, let me, <laughs> let me put that on you, right? I, uh, but I accepted the gift. I give it back to you. <laughs> but if I know him really well, I don't know him really well, and he wants to do me a favor, I'll, I'll, ta I'll take one for the team. Yeah, uh, I don't no, know I just you, take it. If you've been to, like, uh, the 29th mosque in Manhattan? Yeah, I've been. It's been a long time. Yeah, uh, so over there, a lot of people give people perfume. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So all the time. All the time, yeah. And sometimes you can say no, you know? Yeah. But you, you don't say no. It's like, you know, I, if, you, if you allow me, I, I just had one. I don't want to put another one. But if you insist, I'll put some. Right? You say, I just had, my brother just give me one. If you insist, I'll take it, but I'm good. But if you insist, I'll take it. I'll take a little bit, you know? But... You know, and you know, it, it takes a little bit of uh, you know, it's a little bit of wisdom and joviality, and make it make it uh, make it a uh, what's the word? Make it a light matter for the brother to smile and to, and so on. Oh, uh, so, but um, sometimes it's hard, and when it gets hard and it gets awkward, just take a little bit. It's okay. Yeah, it, yeah, it does get it does get hard work because uh, I remember I told brother that uh, I didn't want to take it, and he told me that. Like, there are two things <laughs> that you, you don't have to, like... Yeah, three things. One of them is... He said yeah. two. Like, he said he say, two. Uh, the bean. Yeah. One is uh, perfume, and another one is date. Now, I would be like, well, it's not date, where you got milk. that? Where you got that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. It's three things. Milk and milk and perfume and, and pil pillows. So cushion, first, cushion. Yeah. Anyway, so, you, <laughs> you know, every situation has its own. We, we use the wisdom... But the criteria is, if I have to endure a little bit of bad smell to preserve the heart of my brother, I think the heart of my brother is worthiest to be preserved. And I'll take one for the team. It's not a problem. You know, I just go ready for it. It's fine. Thank you so much. You know, the Prophet Wisdom was a man who cared for people for their own sake. If, you broke, if that brother starts thinking ill of you, he's sinning. You know what I mean? He thinks that you're arrogant. So you, you close that door on him so he doesn't think ill of you. And that's worthy of sacrifice. It's a worthy sacrifice. You know? So, anybody else? Any, question, any comments? It doesn't have to be questioned. Please, if you have any comments, it's fine. Yes, Bismillah. And then we end up with it, inshallah. Assalamualaikum, Sheikh Hassan. Um, so, the Prophet ﷺ was obviously like the best example, but um, I think that for no, us... Hold on. The Prophet ﷺ was the best example. Point. <laughs> there is no buts or ifs. And then say whatever you want to say after that. Don't put, a, don't put an exception to that. He was the best example. And say whatever you want to say. Don't put a but to that. Okay? Um, Sorry. No, no. That was a good reminder. Um, for us, I think sometimes not speaking. So when he mentioned that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi never spoke idle talk or only said things that for, for the sake of um, reward and benefit, sometimes when you don't speak, it might come off to a group as if you think that you're better or you're arrogant. So um, is, there, is there a purpose of small talk or of idle talk like to make it seem like you fit into a group more? Because I know... Rasulullah also did like well, the hadith goes on to say that he would laugh and smile the same thing so yeah. there's a balance but how do we achieve that? Yeah. It, the small talk for a purpose is a good thing. You know what I mean? Small talk to get to know people you have a purpose behind it that is lofty is a good thing. Somebody comes to a place where there are a lot of muhajjabas and they feel like oh my gosh like, so small talk is good to set them off and make them feel easy and so on and so forth. You have you have a, a, a you have a you know, classmate or, or, uh, or roommate or so on and so forth, and you don't have much to talk about, you're not going to just sit down silent. Small talk is, you know, brings brotherhood and sisterhood to, to, to a level of that is good. We make, it, we make, we make our, our, you know, uh, we make our encounter pleasant and good. There's nothing wrong with that. If there is a purpose behind it, we should use it. You know what I mean? We should use it. Like the Prophet passed by a boy we talked about yesterday, but it's like, oh, Abu Umair, what happened to your, what happened to your, you think that's his idle talk. He's not, it's not, it's not idle talking. What he's doing, he's, 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 
getting that boy to tell him the story, and the story is extremely insignificant to the Prophet ﷺ. But the boy is. The boy is significant to him. Um, it was a hadith in which uh, uh, idle, we're talking about idle, idle stuff, nonsensical stuff, right? There is a hadith when the Prophet it was, you know, say the Hafsa was tough. The, the wife of the Prophet, the daughter of Sidna Umar radiallahu ta'ala, and it was Umariya, she was like Sidna Umar, right? So when she, when she was the wife of the Prophet Muslim, she was tough on the Prophet Muslim. She was tough, like she was really tough, right? You know that the Prophet Muslim divorced Sayyidina Hafsa and then he, like, bring her, he brought her back, sallallahu alayhi wa because he thought Sidna Umar is going to be upset and Sidna Jibreel came in and he said, bring her back. She's, she's a pious woman, get her back. He bring, bring her heart, bring her back. So he brought her back. But she was tough on him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So once he, this lady came to visit, she's an elder lady, and the Prophet is joking with this lady while Hafsa is sitting. He's joking with her. He said, like, he said to the lady, the old lady, Teach her the, what's Ruqya? The, the Ruqya is the, you know Ruqya, everybody knows what Ruqya is. Ruqya of the ant. Teach her the Ruqya of the ant. What is this Ruqya of the ant? It's idle talk. It's nonsensical thing that the Jahili people used to say so they can make their wives obedient. But everybody knows that it's just a joke. They just say it to, so they can laugh, right? Uh, tell, them, tell the ant to do this and to do that, and it's, it rhymes, it rhymes, right? It rhymes. Tell the ant to do this and to do that, so your wife can be obedient. So, so your wife can be pleasant. It's not obedient. So your wife can be pleasant. The prophet did not want idle talk. He did not want the, the ruqya of the ant. What he wants, he wants, say, the Hafsa to hear the last passage of that. You know what I mean? Be pleasant, please. <laughs> That's what it is. There is a purpose behind Just be pleasant. That's it. So if there is a purpose behind, it'll talk yes. You, you have guests, and there isn't much between you. There is a, there, there is a gap, uh, cultural or, or so on, or age or whatever, and you sit down there quiet. No. I talk to my guests. Part of that is generosity. Better than food. Just talk to them about whatever, whatever they like. If they like you know, football, talk about them. We won against Alabama. Come on, people. Right? We won against Alabama. Right? Uh, it's whatever. You know, what, whatever. You know, whatever they feel they're interested about, we talk to them about it. It's fine. No problem. Right? He, 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 it, because it has purpose. The idea in here when it'll talk because for the sake of it'll talk and it consumes all our talk. That's where the problem is. Purposeless and on and on and on and on and on. Right? That's where that's where it's problematic. Stop in here inshallah bidna. Sallallahu ala Muhammad Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam صلى الله على محمد لا أليك وسلم طالع البدر علينا من ثانية الوداع وجاب الشكر علينا ما دعا لله داعي يا إمام الأنبياء يا ختام الأنبياء يا إمام الأولياء يا ختام الأنبياء رحمة أرسلت طه منقذا بعد الضياع صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم صلى الله على محمد وعلى آله وسلم اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم سليم على خلقك وادانك سكا وزين تعرش كم جد كلماتك يا رب يا ارحم الراحمين يا رب فرغيف اس بي ويز اس دونت ليف اس اور سيلز از يو جاد ريسين هير يا ارحم الراحمين جاد ريسين يور ميرسي ويز اور بروفيت صلى الله عليه وسلم از يو جاد ريسين هير ان شاء الله ان هابينس ان جودنس يا ارحم الراحمين فور ايفريبوديز ايفريبوديز نيدز يا ارحم الراحمين وي اول هاف بيردنز يا الله كاري ذيم اواي فروم اس يا الله وي اول هاف نيدز يا الله فولفيل ذيم فور اس يا ارحم الراحمين We all have, have, have dua, Ya Rabbi, and supplications, Ya Allah, Ya Arhamar Rahimin, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi, fulfill them for us, you know that they are good for us, Ya Allah. 
Ya Rahman Rahim. Please take one, one minute, inshallah. Make dua for your family, make dua for your loved ones, make dua for the Ummah of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and we make a khatma, inshallah. Bidna. اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم الحمد لله رب العالمين سكول اقامه ان شاء الله ليتس بري ان شاء الله وي اكستند ات ليتل بيت بسم الله so i just i just want to say one thing ان شاء الله before we I just want to explain one thing before we before we go, inshallah. One thing we do, though we do all.